Today we're installing front control arm bushings on Bailey's blue car. Uh, these are Delrin offset front control arm bushings, so they bring the wheel forward in the wheel well, which gives you a bit more caster, a little bit more handling feedback, and a little bit more camber as the wheel turns. So all we have to do, pull the wheel off, drop the back of the control arm off, smack the old one off, and then put these in the old lollipop. I don't have a mallet, so we're improvising with an old drive shaft. Right, so if you haven't seen BMW front suspension setup, this is it. You first and strut, you your sway bar, tie rod in there, that's the control arm. So you've got three mounting points, this one back here, that mounts to the front subframe, Obviously mounts in there to the hub and at the back. That's where it mounts and that's what we're replacing. So that controls how much caster is in the car. So the offset ones we're putting in will add more caster. Is it a tranny leak? Is it? Is it the no, it's not the motor. Yeah, that's cool. Just M44 stuff. The reason why we've gone with offset and Delrin front control arm bushings, I've used poly before and didn't notice a huge difference going from poly to Delrin. Um, and so the added benefit of no squeaking, because these are an oily plastic, um, is really beneficial because the squeaking gets really annoying. The other thing is the offset. So what it does is it pushes the wheel further forward in the wheel well. Basically gives you more caster, better return to center, more steering feel, and it gains a little bit more camber as the wheel turns, which is good for both low speed and high speed cornering. If you're looking for better ride quality, go with OEM M3 bushings, the rubber ones. So then you've got this large portion here of rubber that will absorb a lot of the impacts, like square edge hits and that sort of thing. If not, these are perfect. So for these two bolts here, you'll need a 17, probably a breaker bar as well. So as you can see, these stock rubber bushings, lots of play in them. And they wear out really quickly because they're vented. And all this rubber starts to degrade and pull apart. So going to solid ones gives you a lot more steering feel, lasts a lot longer. So we'll knock those off with a hammer and away we go. There's a heap of rubber still on the um, on the control arm, but we can just cut a slit into it and then sort of peel it off, hopefully. This whole process seemed a lot harder than the last time I did it, like on my silver car, so I might try something different on the, um, on the other side, but we'll see what happens. So what we've got to do here is there's this metal ring around the outside that is actually fused to the rubber. So we've just got to cut through the metal ring until it's got enough space to sort of compress and then it should just pull and we can pop it out. And then we can press the other bushing in, easy as that. So I've just been to Bunnings, grab myself a cheap uh, hacksaw. Now cheap hacksaws are fine, especially if you're using it just for the handle. But you'll find that you'll make your job a lot easier if you grab some actual quality blades. 
So these are the most expensive blades that were there, and they were nine bucks for two of them. So if you grab these, you'll make your life easier. You'll always have a spare, and they'll last forever. Um, I mean, I'm sorry through rubber and a little bit of steel. So these are gonna last ages, and it's gonna make my life a lot easier. Which I really need because for some reason these bushings are kicking my butt. Just cut through it enough that it actually now moves a touch. So what we should be able to do is find something to put the bushing on, or the lollipop this out a bit, and then smack this with a hammer, and it should just pop straight up. So I've got one side out. I've managed to keep the scoring to a minimum on the um, actual lollipop itself. Doesn't really matter either way, but it's nice too. What I found when removing this part was that um, even though I'd sawed through, there was actually a reasonable amount of gap between the two metal parts here. When I hammered it, it actually closed itself up, which made it really hard to try and hammer out. So smack it a few times until you see it close up. And then once it's closed up, then take a hacksaw to it again to make the gap even bigger. And what I found is that I had to hit it twice with a hammer and a screwdriver and pop straight out. To try something slightly different on the other side because cutting it out is a pain, I'm gonna try using a ball joint separator. So I've got this one and all I've done is just like with a grinder loosened up this opening here. So it should fit over just enough that I can tighten it down and actually pull the whole bushing off a lot easier. Pulling these bushings off with like a um, like a three jaw or a two jaw puller would be the best way, but I don't have one and don't really feel like spending 50 bucks on getting one. So I'm gonna try with this first and then probably just cut it off if I need to. So as you would have just seen, uh, <clears throat> using the ball joint separator was perfect. It pulled this off really, really easily. Um, all I had to do was shove a couple of uh, nuts into it to sort of space out where the this part of the ball joint separator was sort of hitting. And then it just pulled it straight off. And then I could just, it got so far out that I could just wiggle it off with my hand. So now we can cut that one straight out and then slide the other one straight on. On the other side, we still have to cut off the rubber, like the inside rubber that's stuck on the actual control arm itself. So we'll get to doing that. So I thought I'd just try before I took a saw to it to try and get the other side off as well. And it came off easy peasy. Um, so yeah, if you want to save yourself time, hassle, all that sort of stuff, just use a ball joint separator. All you need to do is shave off the insides of it so it fits on there a little bit better. And then just ugger dugger it down until you see it start to come off. Shove a couple of uh, old nuts in there and keep on tightening down and then it gets to a point where it just slides off. That was so much easier than cutting it off. All right, so I now have both bushings pressed out, new ones pressed in. Um, just used a little bit of WD-40 to lube these up as they were hammered in. I just used a normal regular size hammer to smack them in. Um, always double check the positioning of these bushings as they go in. You want to reference the car and make sure you're putting them in the right way. Like the way they need to go in is that this chamfered part on the outside, I don't know if you can see that, there we go. 
That chamfer part on the outside needs to go towards the front of the car, so that's where the control arm goes in. And then it needs to be sitting so that these bits here, there we go. This little bit here, that's actually for the chassis side, not the bolt head side. Flat sides for the bolt head side. So make sure you reference that, make sure you reference that, and make sure they're in the right way. It should look like this when they're done. Chamfer, flat edge, no chamfer, chassis side. So now all we need to do is loop these up with a bit of WD and then we'll smack them on the control arm and then bolt them up into the car and we're done. And there we go, they're all on there. What you'll find is the most frustrating part is that when you start hammering them to try and get them on, it'll actually slip a little bit out of the lollipop, like the bushing will come slightly forward. Maybe, I think that's just because of the vibrations. Um, so once you've got it sort of seated onto the control arm, which will take a few hits, try and start actually hammering onto the metal. And then once it gets down to the very end, you probably want to hammer onto this and then that consecutively back and forth to try and get it all the way on because it won't line up with the two sort of studs that are here if you don't get it all the way on. So that's how to install front control arm bushings on E30s and E36s. In the next video we're dropping a subframe out of this car to do the rear subframe bushings and the rear trailing arm bushings plus the diff mount and a few other things. Uh, so like and subscribe, get ready for that next video. We'll see you next time.